Well, let's start once over again, and then without the, the bloopers. A DM Podcast, a.k.a. Daily Minutes, number 1613, with today's podcast, 5 May 2019. This is our bulletin for Sunday. This bulletin will be for the major part in English. This uitzending is grotendeels in het Engels. Vandaag hebben we het ERN Audio News en daarna Foundations, de Foundations column van Onno, VK6FLAB. This is ARRL Audio News, your weekly summary of news highlights from the world of amateur radio. I'm Carla Pereira, KC1HSX, and these are our stories for Friday, May 3rd. In reply comments to the FCC on its Petition for Rulemaking, or RM11828, ARRL has stressed that updating HF privileges for the entry-level technician license is the sole subject and intent of the petition. ARRL filed its reply comments on April 29th, urging the FCC to disregard comments irrelevant to its petition and maintaining that technician privileges must be relevant within the context of today's technological environment. ARRL asserted, quote, The increasingly rapid pace of change in communications technologies, coupled with the national need for self-training in science, technology, engineering, and math, necessitate the rule changes requested, unquote. ARRL characterized its proposal to update the rules as balanced and modest. ARRL said, quote, If adopted, there would be no change to the operating privileges for all licensed classes other than those of the technician class, unquote. ARRL in 2018 asked the FCC to expand HF privileges for technician licensees to include limited phone privileges on 75, 40, and 15 meters, plus RIDI and digital mode privileges on 80, 40, and 15 meters. The FCC invited comments on the proposal in April. ARRL said some opposition appears to be based on fears of increased interference potential due to additional digital operation by technicians. The comments note the development of very efficient digital modes such as FT8, which occupies just 90 hertz of spectrum per signal. ARRL further said that comments regarding disagreement on the definition of encryption for masking the content of certain digital transmissions also are out of place and should not delay initiation of the proceeding to update technician privileges. The Army Military Auxiliary Radio System, or MARS, will host the traditional military amateur radio communication tests to mark the 68th Annual Armed Forces Day, or AFD, on Saturday, May 11th. The event is open to all radio amateurs. Armed Forces Day is May 18th, but the cross-band military amateur radio event traditionally takes place one week earlier in order to avoid conflicting with Hamvention. Complete information, including military stations, modes, and frequencies, is available on the U.S. Army Mars website. During the event, military stations in various locations will transmit on selected military frequencies and announce the specific ham frequencies they are monitoring. Military stations expected to be on the air for the event include those in Arizona, Japan, Hawaii, Okinawa, Washington, D.C., and elsewhere in the contiguous states, the USS Midway, the USS Yorktown, the USS Iowa, LST-325, and the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, and the Newport Naval Radio Station Museum in Rhode Island. The Mars Com and Mars Radio nationwide networks will have multiple stations on the air across the continental U.S. An Armed Forces Day message will be transmitted utilizing the military standard serial PSK waveform, M110, followed by military standard wide shift 850 Hz RIDI. The message will also be sent on CW. Amateur radio will play a role in this summer's 24th World Scout Jamboree in West Virginia. The Jamboree has chosen the theme, Unlock a New World. Thousands of scouts and scout leaders from some 200 countries are expected to attend. The Jamboree's amateur radio exhibit will use the call sign NA1WJ. 
It will be on the air during the event from July 22nd until August 2nd at the Summit Bechtel Reserve. Organizers are encouraging radio amateurs around the globe to get on the air during the World Jamboree to help NA1WJ demonstrate amateur radio for Jamboree visitors. The 2019 World Scout Jamboree operation at the Summit Bechtel Scout Reserve will take advantage of lessons learned by the K2BSA Amateur Radio Operation during the 2013 and 2017 USA National Jamborees. It will also take advantage of the existing infrastructure, which includes three VHF-UHF repeaters installed by ICOM America, as well as the utility poles for installing antennas. K2BSA ham gear, stored in West Virginia, includes antennas, rotators, and cables. Evening operation from NA1WJ will involve at least two operators using the buddy system. And now with this week's satellite update, here's Bruce Page, KK5DO. We are getting close to Hamvention. If you're planning on going, be sure to stop by the AMSAT booth, which is numbers 1007 through 1010 and 1107 through 1110. You might just find me there this year, at least on Friday and Saturday. If you have some spare time on Thursday before the Hamvention starts, AMSAT will have the AMSAT Academy from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Dayton Amateur Association Clubhouse. The registration includes the 2019 digital copy of Getting Started with Amateur Satellites and a one-year basic membership, as well as a pizza lunch. Drop on by the AMSAT.org website and visit the AMSAT online store for registration and further information. AMSAT Forum on Friday from 1.15 to 2.15 p.m. The topic is Out of This World Ham Radio via ARIS. Moderators are Rosalie White, K1STO, ARIS Secretary and USA Delegate, and Frank Bauer, KA3HDO, AMSAT VP of Human Spaceflight. Hear about the next generation of hardware systems that are in development. Discover how to maximize your opportunity to make a crew contact from your shack and much more. Friday evening, there's a Tapper AMSAT banquet with guest speaker Dr. P.J. Erickson, W1PJE, from MIT Haystack Observatory. His talk will be on New Frontiers in Human Understanding of Geospace, Radio Explorations of Near-Earth Space from Top to Bottom through Joint Amateur Scientist Partnerships. Saturday, there is another forum from 12.10 to 1.40 p.m., moderated by Robert Bankston, KE4AL, AMSAT VP of User Services. AMSAT President, VPs of Engineering, Education, and User Services will all discuss current topics that are happening around AMSAT. We will have demonstrations of almost all the satellites that fly over from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., Friday, Saturday, and Sunday outside the main entrance to Maxim Hall, which is Building 1. This is Bruce Page, KK5DO, for the ARRL Audio News. This is the ARRL Audio News propagation forecast for Friday, May 3rd. The sun continues to be spotless, but it's still sending some big solar winds our way. The latest blast, cruising along at 1.2 million miles an hour, reached us on May 2nd and is going to be with us for several days. As usual, expect some disruptions on the higher HF bands. Even 20 meters may be somewhat compromised until the disturbances subside. On VHF and UHF, spring weather is triggering some tropospheric band openings over a wide area of the south and midwest, with reports coming in from as far north as Michigan. Openings are not frequent, but it's a good idea to keep your ear to the radio on two meters and up. And that concludes ARRL Audio News for this week. Our thanks to all contributors to this week's report. ARRL Audio News is produced by the American Radio Relay League, the National Association for Amateur Radio. For more information on amateur radio or the ARRL, visit us on the web at ARRL.org. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter by searching for ARRL. If you have a question or comment about ARRL Audio News, 
email us at audionews at ARRL.org. This program is copyright ARRL, all rights reserved. 73, and thanks for listening. Foundations of Amateur Radio We think of radio as operating on a specific frequency. We select an antenna resonant on a single band. We configure the radio for that same band and then turn the dial or the VFO or variable frequency oscillator to a particular frequency within that band. All of our language is geared towards this concept of tuning, of picking out, selecting one special tuned resonant frequency and listening to it. I've said this before, but that's not actually what's happening. Your radio is receiving all RF frequencies, all of them, all at the same time, all the time. Your antenna is better at hearing some frequencies than others, but that doesn't stop it from hearing everything at once. Your radio is getting all that RF information at the antenna connector. After that, every step along the way is removing unwanted information. First, it removes all the bands you're not listening to. Then, the VFO selects which part of what remains to let through to the decoder, and the result finally arrives at the loudspeaker. Ultimately, all your radio lets you play with is what's left over, say about 3 kHz bandwidth. Using traditional radio, if you want to listen to two repeaters, you either need to switch back and forth quickly, or you need two receivers. Now, without going into how precisely, imagine an SDR with a bandwidth of 3 MHz, 1,000 times larger than your traditional radio. Before you think I'm being fanciful, a $25 gadget can do this. This means that you could process most, if not all, of the 2 meter amateur band, and then pick out which bits you'd like to decode. You could decode all the local FM repeaters, an overflying satellite, the International Space Station SSTV, a beacon, Morse, packet, RITI, and simplex contacts. Whisper, APRS, EME, whatever is happening on two meters, all at the same time. Let me say that again. All of the two meter band, all at the same time. The point is that all this information is there, all the time. We can opt to decode or ignore the information. In a traditional radio, you can only decode one signal at a time. But on an SDR, you can extract as much or as little as your computer can handle. Some SDR language talks about using multiple receivers, but a better description is multiple decoders. This means that software-defined radio is fundamentally a different way of looking at radio spectrum. Instead of filtering out everything we don't want to decode, we select which decoder to apply to which part of the spectrum. With an SDR, you could represent the 2 meter band as a 3 MHz slice of spectrum as a series of measurements. There is no loss if you reuse the numbers, so if you process the same data multiple times, you have no loss of signal, no deterioration, no extra noise. All we do is feed the same data into each decoder, pick out the bit we want to decode and have at it. There's a misconception that you need serious computing power to do this. That's not strictly accurate. A $5 Raspberry Pi single board computer is more than powerful enough to do this. You can argue that this is serious computing power. Compared to what we use to land on the moon, it is. Compared to your mobile phone, it isn't. I fully intend to go into the maths behind this, but it's not scary despite what you might think or have been taught. My week has been about the maths, and it's become clear to me that there are lots of explanations around, each trying harder than the next to scare you away. If you feel the need to run screaming for the hills when you hear the words Nyquist, Shannon and Fourier, then get it out of your system and come back when you're ready. I'd like to mention that I've been working on how to explain this over much of the week. I lost count of the number of drafts I've written, but it keeps coming back to the words that are almost as old as I am. My God, it's full of stars. 
No doubt you might be convinced that I've lost my marbles and that I'm going well outside the foundations of amateur radio. But I have to confess, this is what radio is today. And I'm thrilled to be here learning more about how this all works. Hopefully, you are just as thrilled. I'm Ono, Victor Kilo 6, Foxtrot Lima Alpha Bravo. Deze middags zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Alle mail is welkom op het adres x, xdvme Dat is ook te vinden rechts boven aan de webpagina van de uitzending www.pa0ete.nl. De Daily Minutes toont iedere dag weer aan de hand van schokkende voorbeelden hoe een hobby mensenlevens kan veranderen. De internetfaciliteiten en studio hardware voor Daily Minutes worden gesponsord door 70 megahertzshop.nl. 70 mhzshop.nl. Whoever hears this is crazy. En microfoon naar het toer. Abonneer je nu op de podcast van de Daily Minutes. De website van de podcast is dmpodcast.net. DM is kort voor Daily Minutes, dus dmpodcast.net. Bij de feed van de podcast komen er nog een breukstreep en vier letters bij. Breukstreep F-E-E-D. dmpodcast.net, schuine streep F-E-E-D. Subscribe now for this podcast, dmpodcast.net slash feed. dmpodcast.net slash feed. DM is Delta Mike.